Hello everybody. I am Dr. Mauricio Ortega, chair of the session SSF2, Synthesis and Characterization of Materials. Let's go to start with the doctor, with the first presentation. Uh, the speaker will be Ashok, Dr. Ashok Adhikari. Uh, he um, talks about, about the study, the, the effect of annealing treatment of the properties of CDC films ground by chemical bat deposition. Dr. Ashok, please uh, start with your Thank you. presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. So, Dr. already mentioned my title. Good, good afternoon, all. So today I'm going to present the uh, work uh, based on the CDS uh, thin film, which is annealed uh, by the MJ vacuum oven. So in this presentation, it contains introduction, experimental details, thin film deposition mechanism, results and discussions, results for the optimized CDS thin film by CB, uh, chemical bar deposition method, results for the CDS thin films annealed at different temperature and times, conclusions and acknowledgement. So starting from introduction, so the CDS is the N-type uh, semiconductor uh, with a group I, IBI group from the periodic table, which is in yellow color. It has the direct band gap from like uh, from 2.38 for the cubic uh, structure and 2.58 for hexagonal structure. And uh, this uh, material can be applied in various applications like uh, optical electronics, gas sensors, photo detectors, catalysis, optical filters, photovoltaics, etc. So this material, there are various uh, methods like uh, for the synthesizing this material, which is divided into physical methods and chemical methods, depending on the conditions of uh, equipment, nature of the equipment, uh, the requirement of the thickness of the material, all these things. So in the physical methods, molecular beam epitaxy, metal organic vapor phase epitaxy, successive ion layer admission and reaction, physical vapor deposition, RF sputtering, thermal evaporation. And chemical methods, electro deposition, nuclear pyrolysis, chemical bar deposition, so okay. So among them, we are focused on the chemical bar deposition method due to its advantage. It contains various advantages such as its uh, simplicity, its uh, low cost for the uh, fabrication of the material, Easily set, you can easily set up, applicable to the last area, high stability. And the main thing is that uniform film deposition. And finally, the, it can have the better growth rate as compared to the, the physical metals. So here I figure one, I can show, I'll show you the figure of the chemical bar deposition method, which I we use in our laboratory. So here we, we put the samples uh, vertically uh, in the substrate, and we deposit the CDS material here. And for the precursor, for this deposition, the precursor metal we use is cadmium acetate for the, as a cadmium source. Thuria is a self sulfur. Ammonium hydroxide is a sorry, complexing agent, and ammonium acetate is catalyt catalytic agent. So you can see here the figure. This one is the what we uh, deposited uh, in our laboratory, the CDS, without anything. So we optimize the best conditions uh, for the for the chemical bar deposition method at a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius and the time 30 minutes. And after that, we anneal the samples at uh, uh, the different uh, temperature condition from 50 to 200 degrees Celsius and uh, and in time 30 to 120 minutes in MTA vacuum oven, you can see in the right side. So before starting the, the results and uh, discussions, here they how does like the film formation, the, how, do, how does the film deposition mechanism can occur in the chemical bar deposition method. So there are two possibles. One is ion by ion deposition, which is the sequential of the sequential formation of ions, which can First, here you can see the figures. First, cadmium ions and sulfur ions attached to the substrate. And then after it, it is going to nucleation and to formation of the CDS, and finally grow the um, complete CDS layers. 
and the second one is the cluster by cluster deposition and this one is the first the can be like metal hydroxide the here normally can hydroxide and uh, sulfur ions deposit uh, is attached on the substrate and they are going to the the chemical reactions which you can see in the scale that which will form the cadmium sulfide direct in that means uh, by the chemical reactions and finally it grows the cadmium sulfide so the ion by ion you can say heterogeneous uh, reactions and cluster by cluster deposition is homogeneous reactions so in results and discussions first uh, here i present uh, <coughs> the uh, the xrd ramon uh, same efm uh, chemical compositions and the optical results of the cds symptoms optimized cds symptoms before, uh, before anally well, so here we are we are having the results from the xrd in figure a uh, for a the the preferential peaks 002 a 26 27 and other minor peaks which are resemble to the hexagonal crystal structure of the cds and in the second raman spectroscopy we are having the first order optical uh, longitudinal phonon uh, 8305 and a uh, second order uh, longitudinal for optical phonon at 605 per centimeter the also uh, are also related to the hexagonal structure and from the same images we are having the spherical grains of uh, i think here i will show you the crystallized size for this and grain size uh, in between 50 to 100 nanometer and from afm we have we have to uh, check the roughness which is found less than 10 nanometer and from the eds results now we, here i can show you the eds uh, spectra and eds mapping the mapping shows the presence of the uh, how does the like, uh, cadmium and sulfur ion uh, correlated and the spectra shows the presence of cadmium and sulfur atoms in the pins and we, are, we obtain the 55 atomic percent for uh, cadmium and 45 atomic percent of sulfur atomic composition of the, in the pin of these uh, samples. And uh, finally, we calculated, we have uh, uh, done, we have calculated the band gap 2.53 electron volt by using top plot. This is the uh, B, uh, samples before, before annealing. So now I'm going to present the work after annealing. So after only, as I mentioned earlier, that I have been working on different temperature from 50 to 50 to 200 degrees Celsius, a constant temperature of 16 minutes, and the temperature cost after that constant temperature and different time from 30 to 120 minutes. We have found I, that the preferential orientation, I can show you again the previous, here the preferential orientation is 002 at 26. So after ending, the preferential orientation changes from 002 to 110. And the intensity of this peak increases with increasing time and temperature, except for the samples, CDS sample 100 degrees Celsius at 120 minutes. So all these peaks, sorry, all these peaks are, are completely related to the hexagonal crystal structure of the CDS, which is, uh, uh, more stable than cubic phase, cubic structure. And here I mentioned the uh, chemical, sorry, structural parameters. Uh, we have calculated the crystallized size, which is found around the 20 nanometer for our samples. Among them, uh, CDS 100 uh, degrees Celsius, 60 minutes, contains uh, higher crystallinity uh, as compared to other samples. So, uh, from the Ramani spectroscopy, we found a similar pattern. Uh, for the first order, uh, one yellow is 305 per centimeter and two yellow is 605 per centimeter. And these are also the resembles with the technology structure. And uh, here, the after annealing, the intensity, like uh, you can see, the all samples are almost similar of the samples. So these are the same images of the annealed sample. ABCD is for different temperatures and I, 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 IV are different times and we have not seen like a very this like a very like too much variation between the the grains and other things because they are all same which is also found with the grain size is found 50 to 100 nanometer 
from the EDS analysis, we have observed that there is some variation of the compositions. As mentioned earlier, the cadmium for the before annealing, it was 55-45, fit five cadmium and 45 sulfur. So after increasing temperature, 50 to 200, you can see that it is changing from 50. Uh, like uh, it is becoming symmetrical composition of the samples. Even for the samples, uh, with increasing time, they also becoming the symmetrical compositions. So this uh, this pattern can be found after annealing. And the figure shows the mapping and the spectra of the CDS and in CDS influence. We studied the topographical property of the material, and these are the fig, uh, figures AFM, AFM images of the 2D FM images of the samples. And from there, we have calculated the average grain size and average roughness. From average grain size, we have found like a, a 90 to 100 nanometer, which is compatible to the grain size obtained from the same, which was 50 to 100 nan nanometer. And the average roughness is uh, less than 15 nanometer, showing the formation of the smooth surface uh, on the substrate. And the, uh, we have also uh, checked the optical property. This is the transmittance uh, of the samples at uh, different at different times. So we have observed that uh, the sample shows the 70% of the light transmit 70% in the in the visible range and uh, which is like uh, this one is which is uh, useful for the application of this uh, window layer in the CIGSC or CIGSC generate thin film solar cells and then we calculate the band gap from by using top plot and we have found that from this case I think I have not mentioned but we have found 2.47 to 2.52 in the range which is slightly lower than to uh, like uh, before annealing which was 2.53 electron volt sorry doctor ashok uh, uh, sorry you yeah, you come finish to on, on time okay yes yes doctor i'll just one minute no doctor so here we have uh, after analyzing all these results we conclude that the uh, the the base conditions for energy condition was 100 degrees for 16 minutes uh, due to the, the uh, due to its the favorable properties uh, which can use in the buffer layer as buffer in thinking for ourselves. And I acknowledge the other uh, the staff, CC Congress, Nasid, and the technician from the SES. Thank you. Any questions? Questions? Yes. Arturo, Dr. Arturo, please. Ashok. Yes, Doctor. Uh, can we see the results for the transmittance of your samples? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you see that the uh, transmittance is above 20% for high energy photons. Uh, how do you explain that? Well, uh, this one, like uh, the, uh, uh, on the left, on the left yes, side, yes. your transmittance yes. results uh, yes. show that you have a transmittance values larger yes. than 20% for photons with a high energy, which should be totally absorbed. Yes, maybe due to the thickness, it might be uh, possible, but the, the lowering the uh, transmittance is due to the high like energy, because the, this absolutely means like here the uh, band gap of the material is 2.5, you know, before that it can absorb on the film. But uh, it, it should be, if not 100%, it might be due to the lower thickness. Okay, the, the, the results are a little... Uh, not understandable because the if you have absorption for high energy photons no, above a threshold, then uh, you should have uh, a very low transmittance for these high energy photons. Yes, yes, doctor. yes, but uh, I think it's uh, due to the thickness problem. Doctor. I would I would say the other reason like why why it happens this. Yes, sir. 
Thank you for the your comments. Okay. More questions? Yes. Please, Doctora Maria de la Luz. Uh, so, uh, regarding the, the, the Dr. Morales comment. Yes. In the transmittance spectra, <coughs> I, I can be two phenomena. Yes. The first is of the two strange uh, results. The first one is the, the uh, Dr. Morales. Yes. yes. But you know what is the thickness value? Yes. The thickness is value? Yes. Yes. What are the. 50 to 80 nanometer. 50? To 80 nanometer in the. 50 nanometer. 50 to 80 nanometer. And then they are, they are very thin. Thin, yes. Ah, okay. Yes, then it's normal, no? Yes. But you have to know. The value, the thickness values, because you are uh, calculating the absorption yes. coefficient. No? Yes, you I know. Yes. I think it's important to read the values. Yes, yes, I, I think I didn't know. Okay, so. the second observation is uh, we expect a sharp absorption edge no? yes. in, a, in a transmittance spectrum. Yes. But here we can see you have a, very a pendant. No? Yes, the, very, very little. Why? Yes. How, how can you explain this behavior? The this one as mentioned like uh like I think the the main thing is the the thickness because the if it is like uh, not it can absorb the CDS uh, material it should be like a, more more like uh, clear no like it is but uh, I think it can be observed towards slopes no towards slopes yes uh, yes. You agree with they, me? They, you have two, two slugs, no? Two tendons. Uh, yes, yes. And you are estimating the band gap in the, in the second region. No? Yes. I, I'm, I'm estimating here. Means uh, yes. this, this is based on this season, no? Okay. Maybe, yes, I will check on that, uh, like what will be happen. Maybe if I take this, it will be like out of range, no? Like. Uh, because this is spectral characteristics of. Uh, imperfect materials, no? Like no good uh, no, quality materials. Not good quality materials. Yes. Then maybe this is the, the problem. It might be the problem. Optimize more the, the position conditions. I need, yes. yes yeah, thank you, ah, thank Another, you. another. Please, we have time, yes, Dr. Vega, because we have 20 minutes for every presentation. <laughs> Sorry. But the other question is, 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 is what? Ah, the, the dislocation density that you are reporting, were calculated or were distributed? I calculated from the ah, Williamson. Okay, like, yes, I calculated from the graph. It's not possible to measure directly in a microscope. Mm, no, no. Okay, thank you, Thank you. Okay. okay. So, uh, this. There, is, there are more questions? Yes, maybe another. Yes. Because we have two minutes more. Mm -hmm. uh, Ashok, uh, you are reporting uh, errors, errors for the composition? Yes. Of 2%? Yes. Uh, how did you estimate this value, this I, percent in the, in the case of both elements? No? Yes, I took like uh, different uh, points of the samples. In the same sample? In the same sample. So I took like, uh, I think five samples I took, and among them I see the variation like uh, 2%, 2% 2 atomic percent in, in the cadmium and sulfur. So that's why I put like uh, 2. Uh, and you use the EDS for this estimation? Yes, yes. But we know the technique is not the best. Okay, yes, you. I just like uh, took the average like uh, this one, and then after like uh, what is the ultimate and down, no? up and down values. So I just took those things to it. Okay. Um, uh, well, give uh, an, an applause to Dr. Ashok for your presentation. Thanks. Thank you.
The next speaker. Is the doctor uh, Arturo Morales, who um, speak on the stability of uh, lead, yodid, 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 in basic perovskite, layers obtained by a single step spin coating process. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I will turn on the uh, camera. Uh, okay. But uh, as you see, the camera is very old. And so just to say hello, I, 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 I am turning on this camera. I will turn off now and continue with my presentation. Can you see? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, so what I will present today is uh, uh, this paper on the stability of cesium for mamidinium lead three iodide layers obtained by a single step spin coating process. This uh, work uh, should uh, be presented by Olaf, but uh, I see he is online now but he never reported uh, during the, this quadrimester. So I will do it for him. So the content of the, of the talk will be the, I will try to give a brief introduction to describe the properties of the material that we want to obtain and why it is important. Then uh, how we design the experiments that have to be done. The methodology for obtaining the characteristics that we wanted to, to observe. Uh, I am not showing all the measurements that uh, we made in order to focus only on the band gap and the stability of the materials that we are preparing. Then I will show the results and the conclusion. <clears throat> So as a, an introduction, uh, hybrid uh, perovskite materials such as uh, methylammonia lead uh, triiodide and formamidinium lead triiodide are attractive because they have allowed the development of very high efficiency solar cells with record efficiencies larger than 25% now. However, these materials are unstable chemically, thermally, and environmentally, avoiding their possible commercialization of the cells to compete with silicon solar cells. So the attempts to use pure inorganic compounds, such as uh, cesium lead free iodide, has not solved the problem, and they are also structurally unstable. And then uh, we assume that combining small atoms, uh, such as cesium, to partially substitute large organic molecules uh, might help for solving this problem. So we are trying to prepare and optimize the conditions to obtain cesium for medium lead three iodide. And uh, here is a summary of uh, some of the known band gaps for some of these materials. The, the, uh, these materials like uh, cesium lead three iodide and formamidinium lead three iodide have two phases. Uh, the, what is called the alpha phase, which is a perovskite material, and the delta phase, which is a non-perovskite material. And they have different band gaps. 
Huh? Uh, and uh, as you see, the, the formamidinum led three iodide has a band gap, more or less the optimum for a solar cell. And the cesium led three iodide has a, a band gap uh, a, a little uh, larger uh, in the range of 1.6 to 1.7 electron volts. The, the delta phases uh, have a larger band gap and would not be useful for solar cells. So what we want to obtain is, to, is the alpha phase of these materials, okay? And if we have the mixture of the formamidinium and the cesium, the lead free iodide, if we will have an intermediate uh, band gap between 1.4 and 1.7. That's what we expect. Uh, and we will see if this can be achieved uh, experimentally. So the, the objective of this work was to achieve a more stable perovskite material than a 3 iodide met methyl ammonia, a 3 uh, uh, methyl ammonia led 3 iodide and form a medium led 3 iodide with good properties for solar cells. Uh, obtained by a single step spin-on process, which is a very inexpensive uh, deposition method. Uh, and so uh, in order to do this, uh, we combine cesium and formamidinium in order to have this mixed compound, cesium, formamidinium, let three iodide. Uh, we designed the experiment by selecting one uh, variable factor, uh, which will control the properties that we want to determine. Uh -huh. And uh, in this case, this uh, factor was the molarities of the cesium iodide, the, the ratio of molarities of cesium iodide to formamidinium iodide. This is the variable BC which uh, measures these ratios of uh, cesium iodide concentration to formamidinium iodide concentration. And when we apply this, uh, as you will see, uh, using a, a commercial program for designing the experiments, we could see that uh, there was a need for at least three replicates in order to they have uh, enough information to have a, a statistical validity for the results. <clears throat> so we, we use uh, uh, a commercial software it's called uh, Design Expert, uh -huh, uh, using the multilevel uh, categoric design. And so we gave all the information that was needed in order to design the experiment. And, uh, as I, I said before, the, the control variable would be varied in four levels, 0, 0.5, 1, and 2. Uh -huh. uh, but we needed three replicates for each one. And so the, the total experiments would be 12. And from those results, we would uh, uh, say what uh, was the average and the error that we have in, in, in our results, okay? And, and we, we, we selected the molarities of the uh, formamidinium iodide and the cesium iodide in such a way that the sum of these molarities was exactly the same as the molarity of the lead D iodide. So the materials that were used uh, in order to do this, was uh, corning glass as substrates uh, using uh, lead di uh, iodide, cesium iodide, and formamidinium iodide. And these precursors would be solved, uh, this dissolve in, uh, in the mixture of uh, two solvents, dimethyl sulfoxide and dimethyl formamidinium. 
The uh, experimental procedure was, uh, of course, weighing the precursors in order to have uh, the molarities that we require, then uh, making the dissolution in the solvents, and then the, the position of this dissolution in, in, in a glow box with nitrogen in order to reduce the oxygen presence and uh, reduce the relative, uh, relative humidity to less than 20%. And then by spin coating <clears throat> at 2000 RPMs during 20 seconds, the films were formed and uh, then they were uh, put at rest for some time, 30 minutes. And then after that, uh, uh, they were annealed at 350 degrees centigrade during times, very short times, five to 10 seconds, because we observe the formation of the material visually. Okay, and then uh, the, the characterization was made by uh, scanning uh, electron microscopy and uh, the measurements of diffuse reflectance in the UVB's range. Let me. So the first important result is, is uh, uh, related to the stability, which was one of the most important objectives of our work. Uh, as you see, uh, uh, the pure uh, cesium lead triiodide lasted for one hour. Okay, uh, after one hour, the sample changed the, uh, its color from from black to yellow, and in that way, we could see that the the sample okay was already uh, transformed into another phase of the material. Uh, usually the yellow color is uh, related to the delta phase, huh? which as I said before, is not a desirable uh, phase for, for, for our materials. And the same happened for the case of uh, formamidinium lead triiodide, which correspond, let me, Let me see. Okay, uh, which corresponds to uh, the zero uh, control uh, value of the control variable. Uh -huh. uh, as you see, they also lasted for one hour, stable. Uh, the same happened for the cases of BC equal one and two, but they lasted one week without change of color. And finally, for, for the concentration of 0 0.5 uh, ratio, BC equal to 0 0.5, the uh, samples lasted for more than one month. I could say even more than two months without any change of color. So those samples were very stable. And th this is one of the important results, okay, uh, that we found that in fact, there is a, a specific ratio of concentrations for which we have a very high stability of the sample. Then uh, we can see the images, and uh, here uh, you can see the cases of BC equals 0, 0.5, 1, and 2, and the uh, image in, in in, in the low and below, okay, is the one which corresponds to pure cesium lead three iodide, okay. But the case in the case that uh, we have the optimum uh, equal to 0.5 BC, okay, we you you can see that that the grain grains are large above 50. Dr. Micro Morales, sorry. Uh, the time presentation is over. 
Ah, please let, let, let me uh, three, three minutes. Okay. Then uh, we also measure the uh, the band gaps. Okay. For each of the samples, the average is in the blue, and you can see that uh, the band gap were 1.45 for zero and 155 for B e C equal to. This is the graph of the band gap as a function of the uh, BC. And these are the average. And uh, we, we try to see if the, this was according to the Begar's law. And as you can see that according to Begar's law, the first equation could be followed. But the fit, fitting of the experimental results is shown in the second equation. And then we can say that the uh, uh, band gap behaves according to the Begar's law. So in conclusion, okay, the introduction of cesium atoms in different proportions in uh, form in formamidinum let iodide should provide enhanced stability for the infinums by spin on uh, the composition with x x equal 0.33, which corresponds to BC equal 0.5, gave the most stable dark alpha phase. Uh, the compound with the 0.33 has a band gap of 1.5, and the grains are large, about, about 50 microns, making this material appropriate for solar cells. Okay, so we can expect that uh, this material will allow in the future the uh, preparation of good, stable solar cells. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Morales. Uh, and uh, are questions? Yes. We have three, three minutes. OK. Uh, Dr. Morales. Yeah. Uh, thinking as ambientalista, I would be worried about where are both the, the, the waste or the residual products of this process. Where end the residual products okay. after the, okay. the process? Okay. Yeah, the, 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 this is uh, a worry for many persons working on with uh, this kind of materials. However, uh, there, there are commercial modules using cadmium telluride, okay? And cadmium is worse than uh, lead. And uh, here we use uh, simply uh, layers of one micron or less. For, uh, for this kind of solar cells. And uh, cadmium telluride uses more than five microns or four or five microns. So uh, this was a worry, but uh, since you use very small quantities for modules, uh, uh, these kind of problems will be solved. Thank you. More question? One more question. No? Okay. Thanks, uh, Dr. Morales. Okay, I think Kian, uh, uh, who is the following, is not connected as uh, moderator. So maybe he will have, he will also have uh, the problem to, to share. Okay. But let's see, let's see. Maybe he, he can. The, the next talk, you give, give, give it. Uh, good, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I, I, I can to, to share right okay. now my, my, my screen. Don't worry for that. Thank you. Okay. I'm, going, I'm going to share uh, my screen. Okay, uh, you can watch my screen, right? Yes. 
OK. Uh, another question, are the PPTs moving? Yes. OK, oh, everything's OK. OK, I'm going to start. Um, Good afternoon to all the present. My name is Gianni Edgar Tineo Soto, and it is a pleasure to have this opportunity to present this research on, on title Optical Morphological and Structural Properties of Ivory Methyl Ammoniolite Tribe on My Perskite Thin Fields, deposited by a single step spin coating process. This research was carried out during an internship in the Simvestab laboratories under the direction of my co author, Artur, PhD Arturo Morales Acevedo. The content of this research is divided in four stages. Uh, first, introduction, I'm going to talk about the perskites. Second, experimental procedure and actualization. I will describe the deposition technique use. In addition, the perskite samples characterization techniques. Uh, third, result discussions and analysis. I will comment and explain the obtained results. And finally, conclusions. I, I'm going to summarize the, the main conclusions in this research. Introduction. The original perovskite material was calcium titanate mineral. This mineral has a characteristic structure ABX3. By modifying its components, different perovskite type material has been obtained as a result uh, with different properties in application, as you can see in this table. On the other hand, the most recent boom about some ivory perovskites refers to the potential that they have for the application in solar cells, also light emitting diodes, LEDs. Organic and inorganic perovskites are used for this application. As you can see, there are different combinations that can form this class of perovskites. Um, however, we have focused in the, this specific structure, methyl ammoniolite halide. In this research, we have used bromine as a halide, forming the methyl ammoniolite tribe of my perovskite. We have modified the relative concentration of its two precursors, lead dibromide and methyl ammonium bromide. We have evaluated the impact of this over the optical, morphological, structural, and also stability properties of methyl ammonium tribal my perovskite fields obtained. Experimental procedure and actualization. The deposition process can be explained in four stages: uh, precursor preparation, steering, spin coating, and annealing. Precursor preparation: we weigh the corresponding amount of each solute, this according to the molar concentration to be used. Steering. One by one, the precursor will dissolve into one milliliter, milliliter solution of the dimethyl formamide and dimethyl sulfoxide. Steering was carried out and was carried out in a hot plate at a 60 degrees Celsius. A spin coating, relative humidity was reduced inside a glass chamber using industrial nitrogen. 200 microliters of the final solution was deposited on a corning glass substrate using a spinner. The samples were rotated at 3000 RPM for 40 seconds. Annealing, the samples were placed on a hot plate at a preset temperature of 100 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. Thus, we have obtained 25 samples of methyl ammonium tribomide perovskite in different concentrations of lead dibromide and methyl ammonium bromide. Characterizations. We carry out different measurements on the, on the samples obtained, such as X-ray diffraction, profilometry, scanning electron microscopy, X-ray energy dispersive spectroscopy, transmitted by UVB spectrophotometry, photoluminescence, and degradation record. Also, we have used the bias square equation and tau plot to estimate the crystal size and the band gap respectively. Result discussions and analysis. X-ray diffraction. These following figures show the XRD patterns of methyl ammonium tribomine fields. Notice the material obtained is polycrystalline. Previously reported diffraction peaks of methyl ammonium tribomine cubic crystalline phase is observed according to the planes 100, 200, 210, 211, and 300. The plane 210 does not appear for the 1 to 2 ratio. Also, the plane 211 only appears for the 1 to 0 0.667 and 1 to 0. Point, uh, Fire ratio. This ladder is slightly shifted 0 0.3 degrees due to uh, modification, uh, modifications in the crystal in crystalline lattice parameters. Additional diffraction peaks were were, were identified using high score plus software database. Lead dibromide uh, with orthorhombic crystalline phase is observed, um, attributed to remaining lead dibromide, does not, does not participate in the perovskite crystallization. Another compound identified is dimethylamine bromide. Uh, with monoclinic crystalline phase as a consequence of the chemical reaction during, during the perovskite crystallization. The presence of these compounds may cause a low carrier mobility and also decrease electrical conductivity in the material. This, in this table, the device square equation was used to estimate crystalline size. The methyl ammonium tribomine uh, samples have the largest crystalline size in the plane 100. According to the previous research, it was expected 
the, the crystallization could improve at a higher concentration of lead dibromine uh, concentration in solution. However, as you can see, this also occurs for opposite ratios with lower lead dibromine concentration in solution. Profilometry. This, this following table shows the average thicknesses of methyl ammonium lead dibromine fields between 349 and 792 nanometers. Uh, for the concentrations different for one to one ratio, uh, the, the average field thickness decreases. Uh, that's mean part of the precursor uh, in excess is possibly evaporated. And the following figure show here the presence of wrongness in the samples is observed. There is surface diffusion as the perovskite crystallizes. However, the samples with one to one ratio have a good morphology in contrast to the, to the other samples to, to, to the ratios with one of the precursor in excess, which which um, which show a wrongness increase. Notice that for the 1 to 0 0.667 and 1 to 0 0.5 ratio, have this, the sample show empty zones. Um, this makes us a high surface interaction with the environment and consequently a high degradation. Also, this kind of imperfection could avoid the full absorption of the solar radiation. And this is more critical for 1 to 1.5 and 1 to 2 ratios, since there are large clusters separated by, by empty regions. Then, a large part of the methyl ammonium bromide in excess for this concentration is not involved in the perovskite crystallization. A scanning electron microscopy, CN micrographs show another perspective about the morphology of the methyl ammonium tribomyl layers obtained. Microscopy inspection at one magnification uh, confirms that the one to one ratio have the best morphology in contrast to the other samples. The observations at 10 magnifications uh, also provides uh, a more detailed view of the influence of the surface diffusion as the pearl sky crystallized. Emphasize the presence of the methyl ammonium tribomine pearl sky cluster structure separated by empty regions. Seeing images, images show uh, also uh, corroborate erroneous increase for the 1 to 0 0.667 and 1 to 0 0.5 ratios. Uh, and the other hand, for the 1 to 1.5 and 1 to 2 ratios, the samples show large clusters separated by large empty regions. This following table um, provides the compiles the, the concentrations of bromine and lead obtained by X ray energy dispersive spectroscopy. Uh, the obtained ratios uh, are far from the expected ratio 3 over 1, as do uh, the presence of lead dibromine and dimethylamine bromide and the methyl ammonium lead tribomine perovskite. Then it's not convenient to carry out more, uh, to carry out the positions of methyl ammonium lead tribomine perovskite with an excess of methyl ammonium bromide. Uh, by the described technique, this situation produces no compact and no uniform layers with a lack of stoichiometry composition. Transmitted by UVB spectrophotometry, and this following um, figure shows uh, the optical transmitters for well, for methyl ammonium lead tribomyo layers for wavelengths between 400 and 800 nanometers. Notice that for the 1 to 1.5 and 1 to 2 ratio, their, their transmitters drop at absorption age is, is smaller than for the 1 to 1 ratio. This lower absorbing is associated with standard empty zones and also a smaller absorption volume for the samples as was explained before. Based on this, we can assume that the samples with a, a lower methyl ammonium bromide than the lead dibromide concentration in solution, the layers obtained are more absorbent. But uh, it will be appropriate to, to carry out more extensive studies in the future to, to achieve a better stability and also better surface morphology for the samples with a lower concentration, lower than, than one. Also, in this table using tau plot, the average band gap of methyl ammonium lead tribomine fields uh, was estimated. The ratios 1 to 1, uh, 1 to 0 0.667 and 1 to 0 0.5 uh, had an average band gap of 2.29 electron volts and 2.28 electron volts. This larger band gap uh, than for the methyl ammonium lead triodide perovskite is due to the bromine as a halide atom. On the other hand, for the 1 to 1.5, 1 to 2 ratio, uh, their average band got decreased to the to, to 2.23 electron volts. Um, this, this correlated with a bulk explanation as do the, the, the morphological and structural imperfection for these samples. For luminescence, uh, the for luminescence of the methyl ammonium tribomyo layers 
was also evaluated at the room temperature for 1 to 0 0.5, 1 to 2, 1 to 1, and 1 to 1 1.5 ratio. As you can see, in the presence of uh, a, laser, a, laser, a laser excitation, the, at the room temperature, the methyl ammonium nitride of my periscope fields emits photons with wavelengths uh, close to the green color between 530 and 550 nanometers. Also, notice that for the 1 to 1 1.5 ratio, its PL peak is shifted to, towards a small energy. But this situation is, is in agreement with the uh, the results observed in the material bank gap. The results show here uh, indicate that uh, uh, at the room temperature, the, mater the, 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 the material have a high band-to-band -band relative carrier recombination, which is a good property for making LEDs. Degradation. This table provides the aging images at ambient conditions of methyl ammonium nitribamide uh, fields. Despite the, love, the lack of encapsulation, the, the samples largely maintain part or part of their apparent color for more than 28 days. Uh, in research of mixed perovskite, which combine bromine and, and iodine as a halide, the, the, better, the stability has been attributed to methyl ammonium nitride my cubic crystalline phase. Another studies mentioned state that the better stability of methyl ammonium nitride my perovskite in, than the methyl ammonium nitriodide perovskite is associated with uh, a low mobility of bromine ions and also the suppression of the methyl ammonium cations migration. Finally, the, the samples manufactured uh, with one-to-one -one ratio have the best characteristics. Possibly the surface roughness degree affects the, the stability. Conclusions. Methyl ammonium triodide tri perovskite fields with a cubic structure were obtained by one step spin one deposition of a solution with different molar concentration ratios of the precursor lead dibromine and methyl ammonium bromide. The sample showed the presence of some lead dibromide and dimethylamine bromide in addition to the cubic methyl ammonium tribomine crystallized. No uniformity and roundness morphology are observed for the samples. Using one of the precursor in excess, either lead dibromide and or methyl ammonium bromide, promotes the increase of the, per of the perovskite crystalline size. However, this occurs at the expense of an increase in the wrongness and in homogeneity, as it was concluded when the profilometry in CN measurements were analyzed. For the one-to-one -one concentration ratio in the starting solution, a compact and homogeneous layer was achieved with a band of or the order of 2.29 uh, 29 electron volts. And with the strong luminescence emissions in the grain wellness range, assuring the possible application of this layer for green electroluminescence diodes in the future. Then, in the future, we shall concentrate or reinforce in improving the field deposited with a one-to-one -one concentration ratio, for example, using antisolvents for achieving more uniform layers and changing the needling temperature to reduce the residual lead di dibromide, uh, dimethylamine bromide presence. I would like to sense, uh, I would like to, to, to sense uh, their, for their help in this research to engineer Rosa Marina Sanchez, PSD Isaac Montes Valenzuela, PSD Gaspar Casado Cruz, Master Adolfo Tavira Fuentes, and engineer Miguel Angel Lunares. Thanks for your attention. If you have any question, you would like to answer them. Thanks, Master of Science. Are there any question? Yes, I have. <laughs> Questions. At least one question. Yes. Dr. Marilu, por favor. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, the first question is: uh, is the same question that uh, someone made to the previous presentation in the transmittance spectra? Uh, you have a shift to uh, to our higher transmittance values. How how could you explain this shift? Okay, give me a second to show uh, to sh to to show the the specific uh, PPT. Mm. Okay, here. Okay, I was explaining uh, in my presentation is a consequence of the morphology that we have obtained and the and for these samples. Um, 
of course, there are wrongness uh, in all the samples obtained, but these for these concentrations, uh, for, for sorry, for these concentrations, for the one to one point five, one to two ratio ratios, we have I think the worst morphology that we can, we we couldn't ob obtain uh, obtain in this research. We have a large cluster separated by a large anti regions. So this situation, as was also mentioned in the, the presentation, may cause uh, a lot, uh, avoid the full absorption of the solar radiation. So for the reason in this case, uh, the well, maybe we can I can explain that. But when we ha we have the light that inside that could inside in the in the solar and the material, um, this light uh, for for this for the presence of these anti suns, this this light can can be transmit transmitted. Uh, through the it is empty zones to the corning glasses, so this avoid the absorption of, of the absorption of from the material. So for the reason we have a higher transmitters for these for these concentrations. Okay. I don't understand. Then you said this shift is a consequence of what? In resume, you mentioned that is the morphology of the fields. Yes. OK, but what is happening with the light? Is reflected or because uh, transmission increase? No, but the light, it could be maybe reflected or transmitted. What is the truth? OK, in this case, we are we are related that with the that is transmit for these anti sums that is that are present in the in the in the morphology of for these samples. Um, but I need to admit that we don't analyze the reflectance for these samples, so it will be appropriate to carry out more extensive studies to to understand to obtain a better uh, understanding of this of this behavior of, of these samples. Marilu, Marilu. Yes. We, have, we have we have we have a void region, void region in the material in the samples, and because of that, uh, then we have an average transmittance when we measure the transmittance, and uh, so it is associated to the morphology of the of the material, and as you see, uh, let let's see again the transmittance. <clears throat> also, for the, in, the, in this case, we observe that for the one-to-one -one ratio, uh, the transmittance is the best. But this measurement reveals that we still have some problems with the uh, morphology and the presence of some void regions in, in, the, in the layers. So that's why we want to improve OK, in, for, for the case of the one one to one, which is the, the dark, uh, the black no? uh, curve, uh, we want to improve. We will do it by uh, trying to deposit in a more uniform way the, the samples. Another comment. I suppose the annealing environment doesn't affect the, the film quality because you are making a, the annealing you are making on a hot plate. Why don't you use a controlled environment as a furnace or a, an oven? Why not? Yeah, M maybe uh, uh, we should try. Sorry, what what does mean about the control of the environment? You you, you can you can uh, you can say it's about uh, the for example the encapsulation, maybe the glove chambers in the beginnings of the of the deposition process or. Process. What? You're using a hot plate, no? Hot plate. But uh, my comment or my question is, uh, why not use a furnace or a, an oven instead of the hot plate in order to. To look for a good quality, I suppose is 
In this case, for example, the this the for example the spin coating use or maybe the position process use in this and this research is the most common, and and also is, I think I consider that is the uh, have a, a lot of cost um, than the other kind of 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 the position process. Uh, so for the reason we use in this case a hot plate instead of another another kind of of system that to to add to the annealing. Of, of course, it will be possible. I think it, this is the uh, I think this is the the interesting about the, 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 the research because we can improve different kind of properties or maybe we can uh, improve obtain a better results uh, using another kind of systems but it will be it will be possible okay the, thanks uh, for your presentation master yeah. Thank, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. The next presentation will 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 be given by Odin, Doctor Odin Reyes Vallejo. Uh, yes, I, I am here. Uh, can you see my presentation? Do you hear me? Yes. Can you see my slides? Yes. OK, thank you. Uh, well, in this occasion, like in the morning, uh, I will present a similar study. But in this case, we are studying uh, some photo photoanodes for oxygen evolution reaction. Uh, in this occasion, uh, we tried. Uh, we are the, the, the same group and we are uh, collaborating collaborating the same uh, institute that I say in, in the morning. Uh, we deposit uh, three different uh, materials by ele electro deposition. Uh, this project is part of uh, a, a bigger project uh, in which we want to enhance the performance of photoanode or bismuth vanadate that we deposit also by electro deposition. In this case, we, we in that case, we were uh, looking what happened when we deposit three, these three different layers. And in this occasion, I'm only going to talk about uh, the single deposition of, of these three, three layers. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, there are a lot of problems with uh, the chemical stability of, of this uh, kind of, of technology, and that's what uh, we are trying to, to work, uh, focusing on working with uh, not, not expensive materials. Uh, well, in the first case, we have uh, iron uh, oxydroxy, uh, which is reported to, to be a very good uh, electrocatalytic uh, material. This means that uh, we need uh, a less potential to, to reach the, the oxygen evolution reaction for, for, the, for this case. Uh, hematite uh, is another uh, good material uh, because its bank up is around uh, 2 to 2.3 electron volts. So this material could help us to uh, enhance the absorption of light. Uh, it has a very good uh, transference of carriers, uh, and it has a very good uh, paradigmatic efficiency, uh, which means uh, the promotion or the uh, production of oxygen according to the carriers that are produced. Uh, and in the third, third case, uh, the zinc ferrite is a combination of these two materials. Uh, it pre presents uh, electrocatalytic uh, behavior, but also at, at the same time, it has a very, very good uh, light absorption. Uh, well, this is the, the general process. We are depositing first uh, on an FTO uh, uh, substrate, iron uh, ox oxydroxy, which is uh, done by uh, a, a solution uh, of iron chloride, and as a complexing agent, we use uh, sodium acetate. We apply 1.2 1, 1 uh, volts, and you, we are uh, passing different charge, uh, 50, 100, and 150 millicoulombs. Uh, for, for the second case, uh, uh, the only thing that we did is to anneal the, the iron oxydroxide. 
So this uh, simple annealing converts or transforms the iron oxidroxy into a hematite. And in the third case, uh, before the annealing, uh, we drop uh, a solution of uh, zinc and nitrate in order to, to have uh, the, the source of, of, nick, of uh, zinc. And then we perform this, the same annealing uh, uh, the same annealing process. Uh, as you can see, in all cases, we obtain the the, the materials. Uh, when we increase the for the three cases the charge, uh, we see a, a decrease in the XRD of the F, FTO uh, substrate, which means that we have a, an increase in the amount of uh, of the material we want to deposit. H however, uh, when we increase the, the charge, we don't see a, a higher uh, peaks of, of, the, of the, the materials in none of the cases. So, which means that we are depositing more material, but not with higher crystallinity. So, as, as you will see, uh, we will have some uh, effects of this. Uh, we uh, made an uh, optical characterization. This is the, the, the band gap. Uh, in all cases, uh, we obtain uh, values uh, close to the reported, but in the three cases, uh, as you can see, uh, we observe an, an increase in the, in the value of, of, the, of the band gap with the increase of the, ch the charge uh, use. Uh, this uh, is a little uh, contradictory, uh, but because it's supposed that when you increase the thickness of the material, it's supposed that you have to obtain uh, lower values. However, we observe uh, a decrease in the strain and the urbach energy, which means uh, less defects uh, in the material, so less subbands are incorporated or penetrate the, the band gap. So that's the reason we we think we have a lower, uh, higher values. Also, uh, according to the same images that I will present, uh, our uh, morphology is highly porous. So we will have, or we will, we have uh, multiple multiple reflectance uh, uh, in the in the in the material. So this. Uh, Will be another explanation for uh, for this behavior. Uh, well, these are the are the values that we estimated with the structural and optical characterization, um, and you can see the band gap increases and the Urbach energy and strain dec decreases uh, as the thickness of uh, increases. Uh, so in the three cases, we observe uh, uh, a porous uh, appearance. However, in the third one, in the zinc ferrite. Uh, we observe for the uh, two um, the two first uh, cases uh, a, a flat appearance. This is related because at, at the end of the uh, I, I forgot to say that at, at the end of the annealing of the the process in the case of zinc freight, we uh, uh, promote uh, the remotion of the excess of oxide zinc by submerging the the layers on sodium hydroxide. So this is uh, which gives us the, the, the appearance of, of these two first cases because we have less material. So in consequence, we have a lot of zinc oxide. So, so when we uh, introduce the, the solution, we remove uh, more of the material. So th th that is the, the reason. Uh, we confirm the, the, this uh, appearance by AFM. And well, the, the most important uh, at the end, when we, when we perform the photo, photoelectrochemical characterization, you can observe in the in the first case on the iron hydroxide when the, uh, that the increase of a charge uh, use promotes a, a, de a decrease in the potential needed for the oxygen evolution reaction, which is something we we expected uh, and something we we wanted, and con confirms the that this material is a, an el an el electrocatalyst. Uh, on the other hand, uh, when we have hematite, we, we have an increase in the photocurrent. However, we don't observe a, an increase uh, of the photocurrent with the increase of uh, potential applied. This is related because hematite has an intrinsic uh, resistivity of the material, which avoids that we will have a greater uh, uh, current. 
So, however, uh, when we increase the, the charge uh, use, we observe a, an increase in the lighter portion and in the photo current uh, uh, generated. And in the third case, we have a combination of, of the two cases. We have an, an electrocatalytic material, but also a material that absorbs light and promotes the, the production of, of a photo current. Uh, actually, if you can see in the, the third case around 1.2, the, the peak uh, before 1.2 1, 1 is uh, on, the, on the left, which means that we have some problems of transference of charge uh, because we have a lot of uh, current, but we can not transfer to the FTO. So once we uh, are above the 1.2, uh, we can observe that this peak is uh, from the right side, which means that uh, or is related with the electrocatalytic behavior of the of the material. Uh, we uh, in this case uh, uh, perform the space ca characterization, this is impedance. Uh, and in this case, an, an, an opposite from the morning presentation, you can see that the slopes in this case are positive, which means that the material is a uh, N type uh, material. Uh, when we increase the uh, the load or the charge, uh, we see uh, a high, higher positive uh, potentials, uh, flat uh, band potentials, uh, which is beneficial for, for, for us because uh, a better uh, transport uh, of carriers are, are promoted to the electrolyte. Uh, with these uh, slopes, we calculate the, the carriers, and in all cases, we observe a general tendency to, to, de to decrease the, the values. This is related with a, a decrease in the order of the structural order, uh, the, the decrease of the Urbach energy and the decrease of the, of the strain. And as you can see, uh, in all cases, we have uh, the potential uh, or the, the, the position of the bands. Well, the position of, of the bands were calculated in this case and opposite to the case that I explained in the morning. Uh, uh, the flat band potential gives us the, the position of the conduction band. So making the, sub, subtracting the, the band gap, we can calculate the position of, of the balance band. So we can uh, demonstrate that these materials are good for uh, working as a photoanode for oxygen evolution reaction. In all cases, uh, the, the material should work. Uh, also, it's, uh, as a reference, is uh, place the bismuth vanadate. Uh, potentials. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, I, I can say that uh, iron oxydroxy is a very good electrocatalytic material that we have uh, confirmed. And uh, in the case of hematite, we, we have a very good uh, photo current. However, we have this intrinsic uh, problem of, of the material. We didn't observe a very good uh, or higher photo response for higher potential applied. And, and in the case, uh, as we suppose in, in at the beginning, uh, zinc ferrite is the, is the best option. Act, actually, in, in the bigger uh, project or in the main project, uh, we observe the, the same tendency. When we deposit uh, zinc ferrite over uh, bismuth vanadate, we observe a, a better uh, performance of the of the material. And well, that that's all. Uh, this is the part of the the team that is working on on these projects. And thank you. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Doctor Ortega, no se oye. Sorry, I, I turn off the, the microphone. There are uh, questions?
It seems that there are no questions. Thank then, you. Uh, we we follow uh, with the, the next. Then we next uh, with uh, the speaker Jonathan Ortiz Vasquez. I'm going to present a word a more social matter with Kelly Marcinac, Anita Tapu Carolincha, with a more social matter, and five films run by Money Transporter. And so we start with the index. I divided the presentation in four parts. We have the introduction, the film synthesis and characterization, the projection development, characterization and discussion. Uh, I need to personally drop that. Okay. Um, uh, starting again. My name is Jonathan Ortiz Vasquez. I'm going to present the work Amorphous Gallium Matzat with Gallium Arsenide and Isotop Heterojunctions with Amorphous Gallium Matzat and Time Felt run by Magnetron Sputtering. And well, we start by the index. I divided the presentation in four parts. We have the introduction, the filming synthesis and characterization, the introduction development and characterization and discussion, and we finalize the conclusions. So, introducing the, the introduction of Gallium Matzai. So, this is a material that, that is M type, it has a very low electron concentration. And so it's usually not to have a to have a use. Here we can see the roadmap of this material, in which well they have grown single crystals with this material, ten films as well, and it has been used in applications in optoelectronics and power electronics, among others. And so this material has the other. This material has the other interest in the recent years and to prove this I have made a compilation of publications done by two journals and double scholar. So this is a simple graph. We have four time spans and what I wanted to show here is that in the last in the recent years, the, in this case from 2016 to 2020, we have an increase in the use of this material. And so we pass to the film synthesis. So uh, give me a moment, please. Yes. So starting with the synthesis, we have to mention that this material has different dropping materials. They have been, it has been used silicon, copper, and manganese, among others. We use titanium because we have seen that it has been used it has been reported that it has been used to make comic contacts, and so we choose it. As for the road method, well, we use a sputtering. We can see the sputtering chamber. Okay. And what to grow omic contacts, we are using the electron beam. And so how do how why did we grow here the sputtering? Well, we wanted to aim for a, an amorphous surface. And for that we can use the sputtering sun diagram. So, how does it work? There are different zones in this diagram, the zone 1, T, 2, and 3. 
the different zones means uh, the crystallography of the material will be different depending on which temperature is it is used at the moment of the growth. And so we aim at zone one, <coughs> which is for materials for amorphous materials. What do we need to aim for that zone? Well, we only need to grow at room temperature, which is well the temperature that we used. And so we obtained the gallium oxide films, as we can see in the first image. We can see that with the naked eye that is it. Sorry. We can see with the naked eye that the films are smooth, that they are transparent, and that they have a mirror finish. And well, we did various characterizations to these films. The first one being electric. We used the method of Hall van der Paul in which we obtain different values. We can see that the concentration goes from 1 to the power of 14 to, one, to 5 to the power of 19. And this is, a, it, this is achieved by varying the different power relationships in, when we grow in the sputtering chamber. We also did scanner, uh, scanner electron microscopy and X-ray diffraction. We can see a smooth surface in the same image. Um, we also did X-ray to prove that the films are amorphous. We can see the ash ground in the color red, that it is very amorphous. And in the color of black, we can we have a, uh, a film topped with titanium, in which we can see that the, there is an increase in, interest in the crystallography. And so we pass to the third, uh, to the third junctions. So we have the first image, which is the scheme of the transactions we aim to, to grow. We use the same equipment used in the films. We use sputtering. Um, well, what was the idea here? We wanted to use a crystalline substrate. In this case, is gallium arsenide in purified with zinc. After the substrate, we run a film of, <coughs> of morphous gallium oxide. This without with no impurification, and the next film is gallium oxide with titanium. For the characterization, we also did scanning electron microscopy. In this, we can see the ohmic contact of the heterogeneous, and we can also see that the smooth surface is, is still retained. We also did atomic force microscopy. This is to corroborate that the smoothness is, well, very low. Um, well, the value studied in this sample is indeed very low. We obtain an RMS roughness of 0 0.160. And after that, we did SIMS characterization. This was done to obtain the chemical composition of the heterogeneous. And, well, starting from right to left, we have the substrate that is of gallium arsenide. The only contacts are not included in the graph. After that, we have the films of gallium oxide. We, in this, is a bit curious because we have the behavior of the titanium included in the substrate uh, in the bulk of the film. This is, we attribute this to, due to the process of SIMS. But we have two films in, in this in this uh, Something else that we have to mention is that the titanium, once outside of the films of the gallium oxide, has a process of exo diffusion. And so we pass to the electrical characterization of the teridentials. We start by a linear graph in which we did, we did a strip from minus four to two volts. Um, well, we added that to, to make sure that the heterojunction is properly working. We also added a bond diagram in which we use the values found in the literature. Um, we can find <coughs> the most curious thing is that the wedges are very different. We have a wedge of uh, 0.7 electron volts for the conduction band and one of 3.1 electron volts for the valence band. 
these wedges are important because they might affect the behavior of the interjunction. Um, we also <coughs> we also plotted in semi-log scale and logarithmic scale. We use the semi-log scale with along with these slopes in red and blue to find the ideality factor of the interjunction. We found values like one dot set, sorry, one dot three, um, four dot nine. These values are suggest that we have thermionic emission, generation recombination, and emits tunnel in the mechanism scale that are playing this interjunction. We also use the, <coughs> the logarithmic scale to see the symmetric behavior at the start of the polarization at very low bias. Lower than 0 0.1 volts, we can see the resistive behavior. And after that, we use we also use the graphic to obtain the values of, of two parameters, which is the, which are the the voltage of transition and the trap field limit. These are used to model the a mechanism, the trap charge limited. Um, well, we pass to the conclusions. We, did, we have this on screen. Well, we <coughs> start by undoped. We obtained an undoped amorphous gallium oxide and titanium dot amorphous gallium oxide that were grown by magnetron sputtering. And this operated at room temperature. The undoped samples were sorted in electrical insulating films. Otherwise, the gallium oxide doped with titanium were n type with 1.83 up to the power of 3 to 7.1 to the power of minus 3. And the electron concentrations were, were from 1 to the power of 40 to 5 to the power of 90. And carry mobilities from 30.7 uh, to 35. We have the, the heterojunctions were produced using the mentioned gallium oxide films, and that the electric characteristics of the heterojunctions can be qualified as reasonable. This because we can observe the mechanisms that are at play. And finally, through the heterojunctions electrical characterization, it was possible to identify the limiting transport mechanisms. And so this is all for my part. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Um, Master of Science Ortiz Vasquez. Uh, are there uh, any questions? Yes, Jonathan. Could you present us a, a slide where we do have the structure, the physical structure. Yes, this. Uh, can you tell us again, uh, again, uh, what is your substrate? What is the material? This is the gallium arsenide. A top of the zinc, or what is? Ah, uh, the this uh, on the contacts. We use gold for the gallium arsenide. Uh, nickel and vanadium for the gallium oxide. Okay. Where is the, the gallium oxide, the substrate there? Where is the substrate there in this image? The, the substrate used is gallium arsenide? Yes, but uh, where is this figure? This figure? Yes, where is the gallium arsenide? Uh, the, this. But it is buffered with zinc? Yes. Then this material was processed? It, 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 not? No, yes. it, it's, it's uh, what do you say, uh, from, from public. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Then this structure was used for the whole effect measurements? This structure? No, or? we we didn't use, well, we, this is a better junction. We didn't use whole bundle part of this. We... Okay, then present please the, the whole effect the table. Okay, then. These measurements were made uh, where? Uh, what kind of structures do you use for this? Uh, well, 
certainly I miss it. That image. Um, is, uh, for the films of Gary Matzer, we use a sutra of, of, of some of the classes. This this comes where well the film is made. It's only gallium gallium oxide. No, this one uh, yes, these ones are from gallium oxide. These are the omic contacts. How were made? The omic contacts were from vanadium nickel. For for were made from vanadium nickel. Not shown in this. Ah, okay, okay. And the last is. Uh, to present, present us the results about this, you know, the characterization results for the structures that we have today. But what for was it uh, built? What for? Do you have a plan for this in the well, future or what? We were, these films were made in plan for the Eternal Junctions. The films were made for the Eternal Junctions. And the Eternal Junctions, we, well, we don't have something very specific. We had planned for make use on some application of optical electronics, but time-wise, we didn't have the luxury to do that. Okay, I, I suppose we need to have the the goal, you know, of this the goal of this work, because in other case we don't know if the results are good or not so good. Or I don't. This is only a comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Questions. Yes. Uh, do you uh, present the resistivity variation? Mm -hmm. And the concentration is follow? Okay. Concentration of electrons. Uh, of what parameter depends this is? Got uh, parameters. Concentration. Well, these parameters are obtained from the films. Uh, these films were obtained are different films, and all of these were made with different relationship of power. We use 150 for one material, the uh, the gallium um, 20. Well, in the first one is 27.5 for titanium, and we were varying that 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 value, and we obtained these different. Parameters. Are we deposition time? What is? Uh, we we were using 30 minutes in deposition for today. 30 minutes. In the form from five observations, the stability is different. The Yes, we. Uh, well, well, uh, we are going to. Excuse us with the sputtering method. The sputtering is is uh, a method used in uh, well, actually, uh, actuality, and it's a competent method. The thing is with this method, uh, we it has good things and it has and it and it has bad things. The bad things it's what well, we can see here. We don't have a, so much for reproducibility. Uh, we can see that uh, we had say, uh, some same relationship of powers. Um, well, the values are similar, but not exactly the same. So we well, got to take the resistivity is different. Yeah. The is the order and the concentration is one of the higher five four uh, four factors, yeah. And the pressure, what is Pressure, we are, uh, I don't know correctly, I think it was 10 SCCM for 100 times. Ah, oh, the pressure, I thought that's a good. Plus, 
No, I'm sorry, I don't remember that value. Thank you. And what is the thickness of the films? The thickness we use of the thermometer for the films are 25 nanometers. How did you estimate this in the, the quartz crystal in the system? How did you estimate these values, the thickness values? We use a perpendicular uh, and... Uh, you don't use the, the quartz crystal in the, in the no. system? No. No. Then the only variable that you controlled was the power. It was the... Okay, and how can you, uh, how can you control the thickness? By the time, by the amount of time we can, we keep the process you, you have similar uh, thickness in all the films. Yes. Uh, how could you control the thickness if you are wearing the, the power? Oh, with the power, we only vary the concentration of titanium. But with the thickness, we keep the same by using, well, it's it's about the same, but we obtain values from 25 to 30. Um, this is by maintaining the same time in sputtering for other films. Right, and obtain a lowest or low, low, low resistivity values is better for you. You are looking for low resistivity values or not? Or only are uh, characterizing them? We were searching for high, for, well, I don't have a a graph here that shows the mobility for gallium mass for gallium mass. What are you looking for? High mobility, low resistivity. What is the object, the goal of the? Uh, at, the at the moment of these measurements, we were trying to control the mobility that we have. Um, well, we achieved that. We don't have a, a specific value that we wanted to achieve. We just wanted to prove that we could, well, control the mobilities using sputtering, um, trying to see the difference between these ones and the ones that are grown from with other methods. The one gallium matter grown by other methods, the epitaxials or, or some others, are, well, they have higher values of mobility. They reach from 200 to 100. We, well, we don't have the one, the highest we got here. We obtain them from 50 to 10. Um, well, that was the that was the objective at that time. I can see a, a clear trend of the resistivity. If you increase the power, the resistivity decrease. It's a clear no, trend. Why not use a higher power in order to follow the the trend higher a higher power? Well, higher. this is the. Uh, I'm going to say that at this current research, we are... Ah, it's a limit. It's a power, a limit power? We are in the... Uh, well, at the moment, we had some results in which we have limited powers, as you say. Uh, we need to measure, well, to measure at least something, because uh, some power, uh, at the moment, we have uh, in a relationship from, from 80 to 40, we, we stop Measurement, what is it? We stopped seeing any value in using half under top in the plants. And so we increase the relationship of ours, then we obtain values. Thanks for uh, the, the, your questions. Um, this uh, was the last uh, presentation. I want to to agradece. I want to give the, the thanks for your for attending this uh, this session. Thank you very much. Thank you.